Bruh. Season one, episode seven, the cute ones. Um, this type, the title of the episode should have been. I don't even know what to say. Like maybe the biggest L because aside from John, all the bros took massive L's to the face in this episode. N they could not win for losing up in this episode. 7.5 out of 10. Yes, I would have given it an 8, but we didn't get Miss Alice this week. So yeah, I, I deducted half a point. And yeah, so we pick up where we left off in the last episode. Well, technically we don't pick up where we left off because in the last episode we ended around 8 p.m. at Tom's apartment. But then it did say, hey, tomorrow we're going to go see John. So technically it did pick up, but it picked up the next day. So Mike and Bill go down to level 28 to see John while he's just sweeping the floor, getting the place together, which I'm still wondering how in the world is he going to open this up? Is he going to get more money from Leon? Because like, I don't mean to harp on this in every review. I'm sorry, but you had 500K, you spent it all. 3K, 300K on the club and 200,000 to pay your boys back. And you're not even taking the money back when you're trying, they're trying to give it to you. So where is the funding going to go to actually... I mean, was that included with the 300,000? You know what? Let me just, I want to just say this and then I'll shut up about it. Let me just assume, oh, the 300,000 wasn't just for the property, but it also came with funding in regards to like food and electric. I don't know. I'm just spitballing here. I'm, I'm I feel like I'm a broken record talking about it. But for this video, eh, this is episode seven and I gave it a 7.5. Let's shoot for 70 likes. Okay. My bruh videos don't do very well, sadly. So maybe seven likes and we can we get seven likes on this video but mike and bill visit john and i will say this because trust me mike is not one of my favorite characters after this episode but mike tried to return the money he talked about how he found out about john taking a fall for him john doesn't want it tom shows up and they all talk about the situation about how john made the save so Mike wouldn't be in a awkward situation. John tells him off, get the F out of here, get the F out. Look, I would say the word, but I ain't trying to get demonetized. I got bills myself. I mean, John's just don't like refusing to take money. What was it? Mike was handing him a 75,000 plus interest. I'm like, do you know what that would do for me right now where I'm at in my life? Pay off my car student. Well, it wouldn't pay off my student loans, but it would make a nasty chunk in it but yeah so john you know what let me get through the episode i got some thoughts about john but i gotta go through the entire episode first okay all right so basically they leave and john throws a temper chance from throwing tables on like john you can't break this shit like you know you gotta open this place up so they leave and remember mike was actually trying to say yo my bad for what what I said and everything. I'm look. I didn't help you when you needed us like 36 hours ago. But here, just take this money back because, well, you took a fall for me, and it's like, okay. Again, I'll, I'll come back to that. Regina pops up in Bill's place, and uh, Peter won't take her back. She's questioning whether or not Bill is genuinely in love with her, and he retorts. The moment I knew I was in love with you was when I saw you with him. <sighs> Regina isn't convinced that it's not it's not jealousy rather than love, you know? So basically, Bill tries to reinforce the notion of, you know, back in the day, why well, I let you go because I thought you were in love with me, that you wanted marriage. I wasn't ready for it. And Bill says the I mean I'm going to give him points for being honest, but it was just a... Well, then again, men, we are stupid. But he thought in his mind that by pushing you away that, you know, oh, well, I can get this out of my system. I don't know if that was in reference to him getting away his reservations of not being ready for a commitment slash marriage or maybe just, you know, getting his wild side out before he settled down. And he said the most selfish ignorant thing that men can say i didn't know you were going to get married and get engaged i'm like so basically you expected regina because if i'm not mistaken they had been and i could be wrong because it's i'm probably getting these numbers wrong they were together for a while 
and then he dumped her and she waited two years never moved on but then eventually did and then as soon as bill sees her and peter together i love you and then we learn that mike actually and again mike yeah, I have a little talk with Mike, but basically Mike told Bill and Bill uh, to give the Bill's credit. Look, Mike said this, but you know what? I was the one that did it. I give him props for owning it because basically Mike was like break up via text, block her if she tries to contact you back, take all of her stuff, stuff it in a box. And you got the nerve to say, I love you now. So. Peter and Regina are going to get premarital therapy and then she leaves. So basically, Bill poured his heart out for no reason and she leaves. L number one. Now we go over to Mike going back to his place and Pam is there. I'm shocked. I mean, literally, I'm shocked. I understand why she's there to make sure everything was set up for the remodel. And I'm like, if this is what a woman's touch is, then dang it, I need one in regards to my place my gosh that loft looked amazing no literally you look and when she said a real bed i'm like that's actually a very solid improvement like for real i didn't even notice that in like episode one i'm like i didn't realize that you know he had like a a futon or something like that. it was damn i mean for as many women as he runs with you would think mike would have a comfortable bed I don't know. Maybe he did. Maybe he just didn't want the bed to be homey to make these women comfortable. So whatever. But in any case, wow, fantastic! Literally, it was fantastic. And you know the kicker? Basically, as soon as Mike is like, "This is great. Yeah, the money. This is awesome. I mean, the money. Uh, you know, yeah, you know, the money put into this. It turned out amazing. This thing between us is over. What?" No, literally, I mean, the, the, the drastic change and sh the shift in tone from, like, this is almost like if in Beauty and the Beast, when Beast is showing Belle that library that he gave to her. I mean, just imagine how beautiful it was, remember? Because I love books. And it's like, you love it? Yes. It, it, then it's yours. Now, imagine if right after that, Beast is like, this is yours, but guess what? I'm kicking you out of the castle. What? S see what I mean? See how random that is? That was exactly the tonal shift of this place looks amazing too. We're finished. And this is when Mike gets to asshole status. And again, as a man, this is what... Uh, remember my episode review last week? I talked about if he was a man and just talked about his feelings instead of throwing a temper tantrum, temper tantrum things may have been different. Instead of just... Well, kind of like Bill, I guess he was honest. When Pam said at the beginning they thought they had an understanding, I would see other people. Wait, I didn't think you would really do it. And then Pam calls him out on his shit. One thing, no, I'm not joking due to height. Look, I'm only 5'7", so I feel like I can speak because I'm short, I guess. I didn't really notice the height difference. But then again, Pam was wearing heels. So it's like... I guess, is that a fashion or wardrobe function to symbolize, hey, remember when Pam said, when we're together, we're together, and when we're not, we're not, I want to see other guys. I guess that went over Mike's head because technically in this scene, Pam was taller due to her heels. Just saying, I noticed that. So Mike seems to be in his fields because apparently he can mess around with all these women, but Pam can't mess around with other guys. And then it's like, how many guys you been with? Do you have anything? And then she's like, well, all the times we were together, oh, I don't have a condom. Well, that's why I always made sure I have one. I wouldn't do that to you. And I'm like, when my girl started crying, I'm like, how dare you, Mike? Because I'm thinking, here's what I thought was going to happen. Because maybe, maybe like, oh, Mike going to be slick. He's going to play the role of an asshole, but then he's going to switch it up like this. He's going to be like, oh, yeah, I didn't want to catch anything for you, but I did. I know I don't have any STTs, Mike. Well, I'm not talking about STDs. Then what, what would I give you? What did you catch? Feelings. I thought they were going to make a bait and switch. But no. He just keeps acting. When he called her a whore, I'm like, you have the nerve to call her out of her name after how you acted. And then she started tearing up. And I'm thinking, if Mike would have said his feelings, then maybe, who the hell knows? 
maybe Pam might have felt the same way because obviously the split between you two affected her because I thought it was a bit strange for her to go from this thing between us is finished, it's over, to, oh, wait, wait, wait. So us just not talking anymore wouldn't even bother you in the least. So she ends up leaving upset. And I'm like, Mike, you don't deserve that makeover in your loft, even though technically you pay for it. You don't deserve it. You don't deserve it. L number two. Now we get to the final scene, Tom and Valor. Well, technically, the last location. Tom's at work doing his job, filling out a form. Valerie comes in. Mm -mm -mm. Basically still threatening about going to the chief. Of I love how Tom was just blunt. Look, Valerie, what is it you want? Like you, you've been causing all this shit in every episode you've been in. You just want to start saying, oh, what is it? I'm saying, okay, I'm sitting right here. What is it you want? You, you wouldn't be causing this much of a fuss unless you wanted something. But I'll tell you right now. Let me tell you right now. It ain't going to be me. You ain't going to get me. Is that what you want? You ain't going to get me. So... He pretty much like, fine, you go to the chief of staff, I'll go on Monday. For what? For harassing me. Which, honestly, she has been verbally harassing him at in the workplace. You know, from all of her sexual in the windows, in, in your windows and whatnot. Yeah, he actually has cause for a case. So, she goes, her mission is to get even with him. You're going to regret the day you ever looked at me. And... He does the one thing you should never do to somebody who's emotionally unstable or crazy. He pinpoints exactly what she's doing that makes her obviously not mentally there. And then she starts to break down. To be honest, this show is rated MA. I thought she was about to do something to him. So she rushes out of the room. Next thing you know, Cheryl Pepsi Riley. Holy crap. I never expected to see her in the show. Uh, Chief. I don't know what her real name is. Maybe it was in the end credit. See, the thing about these shows on BET Plus, they just end and the screen goes black. And we see the peach come up go. Doo -doo 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 -doo, and then the credits roll. But I'm used to the credits rolling at the end of the episode during the next time on. So I really don't look at the credits like talking about. But in any case, Tom goes into the office. And this felt a bit personal as Tom called it out. Uh, basically, Valerie made a lot of accusations against Tom. And because of this, he is on suspension until there's a case going into this. And Tom's like, fine, you'll see. I'll have my lawyer and you'll see him. And that's the end of the episode. But before that, she brings up the fact that she did some digging. And apparently Tom was friends with somebody who was involved in a similar situation of intoxication or drugs and sex with a woman in reference to John. And as Tom said, that's not even how it happened. I still feel like we're not, I don't think we know the entire story. Something just doesn't seem right to me in this entire thing. And uh, me and Chandler were talking and I was like, Chief was seemingly taking this very personally about the cute ones and everything. It's like something like this happened to her. And I'm like, that can't be the Dean's daughter. It can't be because of the fact that Tom, this is the chief, meaning Tom's been working with this person for a while. And these, and these guys don't seem to be th like a decade out of college. I would say maybe like, five-ish years from graduation you know so i think he would recognize the daughter of the dean maybe this was the dean's daughter sister or friend and i don't know but some don't seem right to me some don't seem right something seems off but in any case this was a great nod to what's been going on in the world in the last couple years between like me too times up and, up and whatnot where in a lot of cases there is bias going on where you're guys are guilty until proven innocent so l number three uh yeah tom mike and bill just they they got slammed this episode regina pam valerie slash chief they are screwed they might end up having to work at level 28 with john it's kind of ironic how they didn't want to help um pay for level 28 but you know, what is it? Tom's on suspension. Uh, Bill, what is it? Peter said his father owns like most of the construction companies and whatnot in Atlanta. So without teaming up with him, you know, Bill might not have any work. And Mike, you know, I mean, unless Orlando, you know, files a case against him for spilling that drink at the, you know, bar. I don't know. But um, I think Mike might. Well, unless Mike's past comes back to bite him. I don't know. What if Mike you know, reveals the truth to get John's record clean. I don't know, but overall, um, 
the title was the cute ones, but there was nothing cute about this episode except Pam because she's adorable. I just hate the fact she was crying. But yeah, this was a good episode, guys. I mean, I can't wait to see where things uh, end up next week. And yes, like I said, a 7.5 out of 10. I would have given it an 8, but we didn't have Miss Alice. But even though I could technically give it an 8 because I did love the surprise of Cheryl Pepsi Riley. You know what? Screw it. 8 out of 10. I I'm, 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 de I'm retracting my score. 8 out of 10. 8 out of 10. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below on bro. Oh, my bad. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. I said I'll talk about the John situation. I feel for John because he did what he thought he would do for his bro. I thought we would have each other's back. And he felt deserted when his boys didn't want to give him money for the level 28. But I've done videos on this. I talked about this in other episode reviews. I commend John for doing that. But at the same time, it's like it, it I I don't understand it. It's like you shouldn't expect someone to just hand you tens of thousands of dollars on a get rich quick scheme that has a low chance of, you know, paying off because especially with Mike not even knowing what John did for him, you know, that that's kind of like, you know, your, your cousin, relative friend who's always, you know, hitting you up for money because of that one time they helped you move or they did one thing for you. And it's like, because I did this one thing, I should be able to call up you up for anything. It's like, I, I don't know. So I feel for John, but nobody made him call Leon. He did that him damn his damn self. His mom warned him so many times. And so he he's in I'm in it already. I'm like, you know what, John? So that's why I'm like, I don't I felt for Mike at the beginning of the episode because he was genuinely trying to say, Hey, you I didn't know you took that huge weight off my shoulders. Let me try to repay you. It's too late now. And then Sorry, John, man. You got your own self in this in regards to the whole Leon situation. So that's my thoughts on that. And I'm not blaming Mike when it comes to Tom and Bill. Like, Mike, man, you were the one who was telling me to hook up with Valerie in the first place. Mike, you were the one who was telling me to break up with Regina in the first place. True. But Bill and Tom were the ones who did it. But Mike's still an asshole for how he treated Pam. But other than that, that's all I got to say. Thanks so much for tuning in. And uh, if you want to donate to the channel, feel free to do so on Patreon, PayPal, or Cash App. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. I might do a couple of bruh videos throughout the week, you know, like discussion videos. But be on the lookout for that, and I'll talk to you soon.